Um, I was just so like uh, excited by the change and the feeling of it that I wanted everyone to experience what I had experienced. I wanted to tell everyone what had happened, whether they wanted to hear it or not. And that started, yes, when I was in jail, I would talk to people about Jesus. And then when I got out of jail, I proceeded to do the same thing. And I'd tell everybody that I came across about Jesus. And I'd tell them how they have to change their life. You've got to change your life, man. You've got to, you've got to get in with Jesus. You've got to change, you've got to, you're going to go to hell unless you change your life and get with Jesus. Well, in hindsight, although that sounds good, but in hindsight, it probably wasn't the most effective way to share the gospel. Being that this dude who'd just got out of prison for serving time for armed robbery was now talking to people about how they should change their life. (laughs) Probably not the best tool I had in my toolbox. However, the zeal was there, the passion was there, and, and really, it still is. I'm still really, really passionate about sharing the gospel and seeing people's lives transformed because God has transformed my life from drugs and crime and darkness and pain and loneliness and depression and anxiety to uh, joy and happiness, a great family. Do we face trials? Of course we face trials, but we know that we have God who is bigger than all of those things. Amen? And so I want everyone to experience what I've experienced and what I am experiencing. I want to tell the world. Amen? I want to share it with everybody that I can because it's important. In fact, for me, I believe it's the only thing that really matters at the end of the day. It is the most important thing of all. Why am I so, so passionate? Why do I believe that it's the most important thing? Because it changed my life and I've watched it change other people's life. A relationship with Jesus can radically transform your life. Actually, I'm going to go back on that. A relationship with Jesus, not can, will radically transform your life. Radically transform your life. One of the things I love, one of the scriptures that's really close to my heart, is the end of Romans 8, verses 38 and 39, and it says this, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, powerful, right? Powerful stuff. There is nothing that will separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing can separate you. He loves you no matter what. No matter if you're a heroin junkie getting arrested and put in prison for armed robbery. Guess what? Loves you. No matter if you're a single mom working hard all on your own. God loves you. No matter if you're an amazing family kicking goals left, right and center. Guess what? He loves you too. He loves you all deeply, and nothing can change that. That's encouraging, right? And I want everyone to know that. I want people to know that. I want people to be aware of just how much He loves you. And because He loves us, our only reasonable response is to tell others, right? For those of you who are married and proposed to your uh, now partner, spouse, when you uh, got down on one knee, if you did, and say, will you marry me, my princess? When she said yes, I didn't just go, cool. (laughs) 
Just another day. Just another moment. Knew she would. I didn't do that. I went, will you marry me, my princess? She said, yes. Yes. And then ignored her, got on my phone and told everybody about it. (laughs) True story. That's what happened. But it was okay because I looked back and she too was on her phone telling everybody about it. We were uh, madly in love. And excited to tell everyone about it. How much more? How much more should we be doing it for God? How much more should we be doing it for God? To share this joy with others. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20 tells us, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As believers in Jesus, we are called to go out and make disciples, to share the good news, to tell people, to to share this message of hope, of joy, this message of journey and destiny. We're called to do that. We've been commissioned to do that, to make disciples. So as we read through the Scriptures, we see this command time and time again. It's reinforced all the way through to go and tell people about our faith, to go and share light into darkness, to be hope in hopelessness. This is what the scriptures keep on telling us time and time again. So today, we're going to look at a little bit of our response as a church. A little bit about what we do to try to walk out the scriptures in the ministry and calling that God has put before us. Is that all right? Very cool. So in order to make these things happen uh, across the globe, um, it would take a lot of time and effort for one person to be travelling all over the place. So we partner with organisations that are doing incredible things and I want to share a couple of those organisations with you today. The first one I want to share is, uh, these are some of the international partners we have. We partner with an organisation called the Nehemiah Bible College. Now this Bible College is the only Pentecostal Bible college in the country that it's operating in. Here's some of the students. They look excited, don't they? (laughs) That lecturer was having a good day. (laughs) No, no, they're just intently focused. So these guys are living in a country that suffers from extreme persecution um, and they are giving of their time to learn the scriptures, to learn about God, to learn how to teach others about God so that they can go out into their community and share the gospel. But not just one person goes out and shares the gospel. They're going out and planting churches across their country in a place that faces lots of opposition so that others could hear this message of hope. And Pastor Mike is uh, being just irreplaceable in getting curriculum and leadership um, and and direction um, for the Bible College. He's doing Zoom calls weekly with them, um, you know, encouraging them and teaching everything that he can to see all these students um, do amazing things. They've just, I'm told that they've just completed their fourth year of classes um, and graduated 40 students. 40 ministers of the gospel have been equipped and released for ministry in a country. We don't all understand it very well because we're like, I can go down to shops and tell anyone I want about Jesus. And the most I'm going to get told is to, I don't know, shut up, churchy. I'm not going to lose my head for it or get shot. But some of these people in some of these places, that could happen to them. So they're doing amazing things. Uh, So far, they've gone out and planted three churches. So right now, there's three additional churches that are right now worshipping God 
because of the investment that you guys have made as a church. That's pretty cool, right? And that's in a country where there are less than 2% of the population are Christians. Full on, right? Full on. Uh, we have some dear friends of ours, uh, Jeff and Sue and Armin, who, uh, look at them, wonderful people. Um, I can't actually tell you where they are or exactly what they're doing. Not because I don't know, but because they're in a place that is so volatile and so risky. Well, they're not there right in this moment, but they minister in a place that is so volatile and so risky to share the gospel in that they can literally be imprisoned, tortured and killed for doing so. They are out seeing people's lives absolutely transformed by the gospel in a place that is horrific. Uh, Some of the things um, that they were sharing with me is um, about how they bring the good news to people in 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 an unreached population of around 50 million people. So where they're ministering, there's a huge number of um, unreached tribal groups. Um, They say that when you think about these people, when you're trying to picture who the people are that they're sharing the gospel with, we need to think of it like Bible days, like in the book of Judges, where everyone does what's right in their own eyes. They just do whatever they think is right. And they're saying that currently there's heaps of violence and turmoil going on. It's a really risky place to be for everybody, but especially people ministering the gospel. And uh, that tens of millions of people are living on below $2 a day, trying to survive on less than $2 a day. And some people are selling their children so that they can survive. We can't even fathom it, can we? It's just unimaginable what's going on. Um, it's a place where women have limited access to education and health care and employment. They're treated poorly. Um, but we are part of seeing people on the ground making a difference and sharing the gospel of Jesus. That's pretty cool, right? That is pretty cool. Uh, another organisation that we work with is the Blaze Family. These guys are in Iraq and in India. Young family doing incredible things. There's one region where they uh, work where um, people are so poor and it gets snowed in quite often. So they went around giving every household a um, a drum of kerosene so that they could warm and uh, light their houses, which is really, really cool. Um, There's another photo here. Um, They do medical clinics. People can't afford to get health checkups and can't afford to go to the doctors and that kind of thing. So they're providing for, I think it's some 750 families a month, uh, medical assistance. Um, And as they're doing that, they're praying for them and sharing the gospel and this kind of thing, which is really cool. And I think there's another photo here of um, students that they're um, raising up to do the same. So they're educating in uh, ministry and evangelism and that kind of thing. And these guys are all being equipped to go out and share the gospel. It's cool, right? This is cool stuff. This is, And it's hard for us to grasp. We're kind of like, oh, I don't really get what it's like. Some people here will have been over and seen some of the things going on. Um, but uh, where they, they're operating, the Blaze family's operating, they still haven't got back to a uh, normal living, if you will, um, from when ISIS invaded. We all kind of get an idea when we think about ISIS and the kind of pain and um, you know, torture and trauma and um, life that they bring with them, which is really, really scary. And then another one that we've been talking about recently is the orphanage in uh, Sowi, uh, partnering with our uh, friends in Indonesia to do that, where we were able to build a house. It is now complete and the kids have moved in. That was the opening day of the orphanage that this church built. Cool, right? Next photo. Look at what you've done. Look at what you've done. These kids are praising God in their home, not just a house, in their home where they're being cared for and loved. For anybody who um, hasn't been here or didn't know what this was about, uh, a friend of mine is uh, a pastor in Indonesia um, and he told me about this man, Mr. Sam Case, and his wife. 
um, who um, had taken in a bundle of village kids where they live uh, because the kids were uh, orphaned and um, Mr Sam is blind. He like, literally can't see, walks around with a stick or being led by his wife. They're in their 60s um, and they realised that all these kids were struggling and didn't have people to look after them. So they said, well, why don't you come and live with us? They didn't have anything. They had like a shack built out of tin pieces of tin and that kind of thing in a remote area. And uh, we had an opportunity to help them. They had two beds in the whole uh, tin shack, the shanty. Um, and we were able to be part of um, getting them a big, nice, comfortable house where they can live and get education and grow and do something amazing with their life. Pretty cool, hey? So thank you, because you guys did that. You guys were part of that process. In fact, we've got a little... Um, Thank you video, I think, from uh, my friend, Pastor Robert. Hello, Champion Lakes Christian Church. My name, Pastor Robert Hutapea, from Impact City Church, Bali, Indonesia. I just want to say thank you so much for partnering with us to make a significant impact for life of amazing children at SOE East Indonesia. I'm looking forward to meet all of you. We can minister together to bring the kingdom of God here in Indonesia. God bless you. And my friend Pastor Robert is always like that. He's that passionate about Jesus. I met Pastor Robert several years ago. Um, he was um, an interpreter. So um, a couple of years in a row when I'd go... Um, over to Indonesia, um, he would come and get me and he would interpret for me. Um, and, uh, and then one day we were over there and we went for dinner with them and he was asking me if I thought he could be a pastor of a church. And I said, dude, you're already doing it. Just link it in. He's now got two locations, looking at three locations across Bali and doing things across the globe. Amazing guy, passionate. And his, uh, his invitation for all of you to come is a genuine one. <laughs> He would be happy for everybody to go and minister with him. But again, we've been able to see these kids, their lives are changed. That's generational change through your prayer and investment into their lives. That's incredible, right? Incredible. Just let's give God a clap of praise for that because it's special. <laughs> and we do get to do some incredible things um, overseas, which is amazing. Um, but we also do some pretty spectacular things here as well in our own space, in our uh, own area. Some of our local partners, uh, we partner with Adult and Teen Challenge. Um, Adult and Teen Challenge is a, um, a rehab for people with uh, struggling with addiction or uh, lifestyle issues. That's a really um, blurry version of um, the rehab in Esperance. Um, we've been involved with them for a long time, both myself and Pastor Micah on the board uh, for Teen Challenge. And Teen Challenge uh, works with people. There's some people within our church who have been to Teen Challenge uh, and seen firsthand um, the amazing work they do. But it is a state-of-the-art rehabilitation facility um, that leads people and helps people find freedom from addictive things um, whilst sharing the gospel. And every day, the people down there are hearing, uh, hearing the gospel message preached. They're worshipping God and lives are being transformed. Uh, we have seen, well, I don't even know how many um, people within our area who have come to the church uh, saying, hey, my life's just at break point. Um, I don't know what to do. And we've been able to assist by referring them on to an organisation that carries the same heart that we do to see people set free in Jesus' name um, and send them down. It's an incredible ministry, an incredible rehab um, and very just doing amazing things. When you check the, um, the stats on how well uh, rehab facilities are working, their success rate, as you might call it, um, these guys are, are incredible. They like just for those who complete the program, it's something like I think something like eighty percent of those that complete the program stay clean. It's unheard of, just amazing stuff. 
Um, really, really, really cool. Love it. Passionate about it. Uh, we also uh, support an organisation called One Voice. Um, One Voice shower trucks. Uh, these trucks are kitted out with showers on them. Um, and we go to places where um, people are sleeping rough or sleeping in their cars. Uh, they're struggling and we provide uh, hot showers uh, and toiletries. Uh, but most of all, we, we provide relationship, friendship, somebody to talk to. So over time, we build a rapport with people. We're able to connect with them and then speak into their life, share the gospel, pray for them uh, and see... Um, dignity restored in their lives. We have people who are really going through uh, hard times in our in our city. It's crazy, right? We we kind of think oh, it doesn't happen here. No, it's happening here. It's happening here a lot. There's uh, nine thousand plus people in Western Australia who identify as homeless. Nine thousand. That's crazy, right? If you go into the CBD on any given night into Perth. There'll be more than a thousand rough sleepers in the CBD alone. A thousand. Crazy, right? Absolutely crazy. But we are part of it. You're part of it. You're doing something about it. We have two of these trucks sitting in the back car park now that go out each week to different places across the metro area. Um, I'm just talking right now actually with a friend of mine who pastors a church in Kalgoorlie um, and hoping to be able to set them up for a truck in Kalgoorlie. They've got quite a lot of transient people uh, through Kalgoorlie Boulder um, and hoping to set them up as well. And through our church um, being part of this and supporting this, we've been part of making this um, a reality in uh, Adelaide, Melbourne, um, Victoria, that is Melbourne, um, Sydney and Queensland. So we're literally part of making this a reality in pretty much every major city across Australia. Pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. Thank you again for what you're doing. Uh, and then, of course, we have our very own uh, The Champion Project. Uh, the Champion Project is a, um, the charitable arm, if you will, the local charitable arm of Champion Lakes Christian Church, uh, where we uh, connect with our community, help people who are at risk or in need, in any way, shape or form. Really, it's a discipleship program where we connect with people and help them take their next step. I thought it'd be interesting just to share a few stats. We all like stats, right? Everyone's like, oh, stats. But I thought it'd be good to get a little bit of a snapshot of what, it, what we're doing, tangibly what we're doing, right? Because it's, it's pretty impressive. So some of you will remember... Um, not that long ago, we were talking about a, a family who had uh, lost the, the father, 38 years old, passed away from uh, motor neurons disease, and we did a bit of a fundraiser for that family. Well, we raised over $56,000 for that family. That mum left with three young boys. It's impressive. And then he came and got a job at Champs, the cafe, and did his, uh, the start of his work there as well, and now has moved on to earn more money, bless him. But, you know, son, what did I say? Oh, not the dad, he wasn't working there, no. No, the son, that's right. So one of the sons, sorry. Uh, we've given away more than 2,500 pairs of socks. That's not a stat you hear every day, is it? We've given away over 300 sleeping bags. This is valued at more than $10,000 worth of sleeping bags to people that are sleeping on the street. Tens of thousands of dollars uh, worth of toiletries and other items like that. Struggling families within our community, uh, we've given over 300 Christmas hampers valued at about 150 bucks a go. Do the math, that's a lot of coin. We've given thousands of dollars in Christmas gifts and toys for kids whose dads are in prison uh, by partnering with projects like Angel Tree as well as with the prisons directly. We've provided more than 9,000 meals to at-risk families. That's pretty cool, right? 9,000 meals to at-risk families. So every week on a Friday, a team of volunteers do a fresh, 
freshly made, nutritious three-course meal and been able to keep the cost of the meal per person to an average of $3, which is unheard of. I wish I could do that, change my budget. 9,000 plus meals. There's 27 grand's worth of meals there, which is really, really impressive. Uh, we've contributed more than 8,000 volunteer hours in the Champion Project, just in the meals program. Uh, 8,000, that sounds like a big number. Well, if you speak to Volunteering Australia and they tell you what the money value of that, that's over a quarter of a million dollars in money value in volunteer power. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. It's making an impact. We've provided fridges for families in need, emergency food and clothing, and so much more. We've built relationships with local schools. Uh, we've got volunteers, numerous volunteers from different spaces in the community as well as schools. We've even had uh, psychologists referring people to come and volunteer in our charity because it will be good for their mental health. That's pretty incredible, right? That a psychologist is saying, hey, you should go and volunteer uh, with these guys. And when we work out what we've sort of given away, there's over half a million dollars worth of value in what you have invested into your local community. Pretty cool for a little church in Armadale, right? Pretty cool. And we can do so much more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just a little bit, a little bit of passion and away we go. So we've got to keep sharing the good news. These are all just tools on how we share the good news. This is what we, they're a tool that we use to build relationship so that we can pray for and with people and so into their lives. And I want to thank you for being uh, such a generous people. Myself, the leadership team, the elders, want to thank you all for being incredible in what you uh, give um, to our local community and beyond. It's almost impossible to communicate how big the impact is. We just don't quite get it. It's hard to grasp the impact that we have. If we put all of that effort in and just saw one person come to Christ, guess what? It's worth it. But we're seeing heaps of people come to Christ. You go to the youth group on a Friday night and we've got people, young people from the families that we take meals to who are attending. There is people in churches all across our state who have ended up introduced to Jesus and then started serving in their local church. There's people who are planting churches in other countries because of the contribution and prayer that you have given. And I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, if I could get the musicians to come and help me, that'd be cool. We're going to uh, sort of start to wrap things up shortly. But I, wanna, uh, I do want to ask us, we've highlighted the amazing um, things that we have done so far. But I'm always inspired to do a bit more, to reach a little bit further, to see more and more people impacted by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And why? Well, because Romans 8 tells us that I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. He loves you. He loves them. And we have an opportunity to be able to uh, invest into other people's lives. We can't all go to places uh, and share the gospel all over the world. We can't all do that, but we can all be part of helping people to do that. We can all be part of partnering as we have so many times before to see lives impacted across the globe. It sounds almost cliche to say that across the globe. You, you are impacting lives across the globe. And this morning, being our Outreach Sunday, uh, I want to give everybody an opportunity to consider making an impact 
even more so to people across the globe. Um, I'm going to get a little table out here in a second that's got a, a little giving box on it. On every uh, second seat, there should be an envelope that says outreach. It looks like that. And I'd like you to grab the closest one to you. If you can't see one, you can't grab one, there's not one near you, then I'd like you just to put your hand up and our um, team at the back will come and hand one out to you. Uh, Because I would like everybody to have uh, an envelope that can, or at least every family to have an envelope. What I want to ask you to consider doing is sowing into these ministries in a tangible way. Giving a financial contribution to some of these incredible works that are happening across the globe because it's important stuff. And I want you to consider, uh, yes, maybe it's a one-off donation where you go, yeah, I'll throw some money in just for today. But I'd actually like you to consider um, making an ongoing contribution. Dawn, could we get that box up here, please? And what do I mean by an ongoing contribution? Well, some of us might be sitting here this morning and go, I would love to be able to contribute a big dollar amount, but I just don't have it. And so our tendency is to go, oh, well, I can't do it then. But I'd like to challenge us today to even think about just your day-to-day stuff. Maybe on the way to work each day, you pull in and you buy yourself a coffee just on your way to work or iced coffee or whatever you get. If you chose to two days a week not purchase that coffee and contribute it to one of these ministries, you'd be changing someone's life. Imagine by just not having a coffee, (laughs) you could change someone's life. You'd do it, right? So I want you to consider that today. might be $10 a week. Maybe you can afford $100 a week. I don't know. But I'd like you to search yourself. We're going to take a minute to do that. Just go, hey, we get to sit here. It's pretty nice in here. Get to worship God together. Got the things we need. Imagine being in somewhere like Iraq and having to worry about dying if you worship God. Imagine all the people that aren't getting to hear the gospel message. They aren't getting to hear that they are loved no matter what. They don't get to hear it, but we can make a difference by a small contribution. So can I ask you just to hold that in your hand? If you're sitting next to a family member or significant other, uh, if you could hold their hand, because we're going to pray in a second. Uh, If you need a pen to fill that out or whatever, again, just pop your hand up and one of the team will get you a pen. Alternatively, you can uh, go online and get the bank details and that kind of thing, but I want us to pray into this. So let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are just amazed by what you have done uh, with what we sort of see as a small contribution, the, the distance you can take it, the work you can do with it. Lord, we're so, so grateful. Lord, we're grateful for those who are out there doing the work of the ministry. And Lord, uh, our humble giving today Uh, is just as a sign of our partnering with them, Lord, our encouragement to them, Lord, our part of sowing a seed to see lives transform. And we ask that uh, we get a revelation today, Lord, about this. We don't want to give under compulsion or anything like that. We want to give as joyful givers, Lord. So may that resonate in our hearts this morning, that we are sowing into something significant, that you are doing on this planet that will impact eternity for so, so many people. We thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your favour. In Jesus' name, amen. What I'm going to ask us to do is to um, actually come up and put our envelopes in this box. 
which is um, nicely made as a little bit of a map of the world. Just come up because sometimes there's something powerful about stepping out. You might be thinking, oh, I'm only contributing five bucks or I don't even have five bucks. I'm just contributing a prayer. That's okay. Come and put the thing in the box as a sign that you're partnering with it because God sees the heart, the heart in it. It's not about the money. It's about the heart in which we contribute. So I'm going to ask our team, our leaders to come first and to uh, pop their envelope in the box as we give. Thank you, team. And then everybody else follow. Just come down and... Thank you, 